say. All right, that's better. We can start over. Hi. All right, welcome. Renee on the right, Angel on the left. I'm Dr. Cappuccino in the middle, and we're talking about one of the most commonly asked topics about Botox. So as I said before, we're going to pretend we just started right here. Say hello as you join. We'll give you a shout out. Any questions you have, please just go ahead and type them in, and we'll do our best to answer them in real time. All right, so off we go. Today we're talking about Botox, and I happen to print out the top 10 questions people ask about Botox, and I didn't tell Angel or Renee about these. So um, we're gonna just sort of throw them out there. Let's say this is your first time and you don't know anything about Botox. So the first question is, what is Botox? All right, what is, I, I can take this one. I'll, I'll start this one off. So um, I, I probably am gonna talk too much, and I'm gonna answer some questions that are downstream, but uh, Botox is a purified protein derivative of botulinum toxin. It is not botulinum toxin. We are not trying to kill people. You know, that's not what we're trying to do here. Uh, it's a purified protein derivative that will temporarily block nerve transmissions to muscle fibers that we selectively choose, and those muscle fibers will be paralyzed to whatever degree we want for a certain amount of time, and that will prevent the frowning or the transverse lines or any of the facial lines that we don't want to see. In general, there are other uses for Botox, but I think that's a good, safe place to start with Botox. Would you add anything to that? No, that's great. No, that's it. Okay, I did great. I'm one for one. Okay. <laughs> that's excellent. There. I also answered number two, which was how does Botox work? So that's that was that. Um, all right. So, what are the possible side effects of Botox? I mean, let's let's answer this question like realistically. If we if we read the package insert to any drug, we would never take Tylenol or water. So let's talk about realistically what we've seen in our collective 15, 30, 45, almost 50 years of collective experience injecting both I think we're pretty much qualified to answer this question. So um, go ahead, take it off. What do you, what do you think? What's a... Bruising mm -hmm. is definitely. Mm -hmm. um, a head, some people complain of headaches. Mm -hmm. um, you could have um, some swelling, especially around the eyes, and some droopiness with the eyelids. What did we miss? Well, some general yes. unevenness. Ooh, yes. yeah. Even. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Are you in the picture? Can you see <laughs> Angel? Good, okay. okay. Oh, wait, unevenness. Okay, that's good too. Um, yeah, you know, uh, let's talk about the headache one. So I noticed the first time I had Botox that I had a frontal headache. And I've noticed in my experience that people typically have it the first few times they have Botox. Have you seen that as well? Yes. Um, my, my theory on that is we're so accustomed to making a certain motion, like raising our eyebrows up, that when we're prevented from doing that suddenly, there's a little bit of a strain and a tension that happens, and it's very much like a tension headache. In my experience, it went away after a few days. I think most people see mm -hmm. that. I will, I, say, I will. Oh, sorry. Yes, I will yes. say some people say that it helps their headaches. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. 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 Well, we treat headaches with it, but um, but sometimes it can be a, both a complication and uh, you know a wanted effect. So okay, that's a good one. Um, yeah, bruising. Yeah, I think it's always possible when you're using a needle, no matter how small it is, that you could have a bruise. So mm -hmm. People should be aware of that. Um, I think the big one that, <clears throat> that people should be aware of is that it can migrate to a place where we don't want it to be. Uh, I think this is most commonly seen in this central part of the forehead. We call this the glabella, where people will have the up and down angry lines or frown lines or 11s or 111s or whatever you want to call it. Um, and the goal is to not have that migrate to, let's say, the upper eyelids. So very rarely you can see uh, a droopy upper eyelid. We try to prevent this by placing it accurately, of course, using a very concentrated dilution and then asking patients not to, well, I always say, please not think strenuous for 24 to 48 hours. So, sound like yes. you say as well. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about that because we're on the topic. So if you are unfortunate and you do get a droopy eyelid, the good news is not only is there a topical treatment, which is a drop, there's a new one that just came on the market like last month. Really? Uh, yeah, my brother-in-law is an optometrist and he I was so excited to tell me about that, which I took oh, as an insult. Like, how many droopy eyelids do you think I get in a year? Yeah. Uh, but no, so there's not many. No, not, not many, many. It, it works it works very well. Um, but uh, people should know that that, um, that unwanted side effect usually does not last the duration of the Botox treatment. I've seen it really up to a couple of weeks before mm -hmm. it fades yes. out. So. so there is a question. Good. It says, what is the average time Botox last? Oh, good. Well, that's that's on this list. Um, all right, you take that one. I, I tell my patients three to four months. Mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking, you're, that move is going to start to come back around that time. And I say, if it's a treatment that you really like and you want to keep up with the results, doing it every three to four months is your best, best 
details. How do you answer that question? I answer it the same way. However, I do say if they are a uh, active runner, a marathon runner, that's it's gonna you're gonna metabolize it faster. It may not last as long as three to four months. Mm -hmm. And so I will say the same thing because that's the, pretty much the, the correct answer, three to four months. Um, however, the one thing I, I will often say to people, this is great for us because we don't always get to talk about it. This is kind of nice. Well, yeah, this is great for us. Uh, so one of the things I'll say to patients, especially first time Botox patients, I'll explain, well, their concern is, oh my gosh, now I'm stuck doing this forever, three times a year, four times a year. And, and what I explain is that even if you only did it once or once a year, you would still be so much better off for having done it that one time. The reason is why I, I think about the lines of facial expression much like wrinkles in fabric. And if we just gave those wrinkles a little time to, to hang out you know, on, a, on, a, on a hook or on a hanger and let them fall out for a few months while they weren't being constantly wrinkled, it would be so much better for time after that. And that's the way Botox is too. We're giving those muscles time to relax and those wrinkles time to fall out. And even if you skip a dose or two doses, you're still going to be better than you would have been if you had never had that opportunity. That's right. It's just sort of another way to yeah. help people to, to think about that. Um, all right, wonderful. So we actually just covered the um, how long does it last? What's recovery like? I don't get that question a lot, but um, I don't really find I don't get that question either. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's really much of a recovery. I tell mm -hmm. people not to uh, lie down for four hours and no exercise at least for twenty four to forty eight yeah. hours. Mm -hmm. No saunas, mm -hmm. anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will say with people with really deep lines, you may not see that line go away right away. As, as, you know, they want it totally gone. Oh, that's in here. Don't worry. Okay. We'll get there. That's not there. Okay. Oh, we'll get there. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I, think, um, I don't have a lot of new first-time patients anymore, but uh, for the first-time patient, for any patient, I would say nothing strenuous for 24 hours. You know, I, I would rather people understand what we're trying to avoid. So we're trying to avoid is a flush of blood to the area where we just injected that Botox because we don't want it to be flushed out because we don't want it where it doesn't belong and we want it to stay in that target muscle. And it takes about 24 hours for that Botox to be drawn into the neuromuscular junction and then once it's there, it's doing its job. So uh, things like strenuous exercise certainly would increase our cardiac output and vasodilate. But also something as simply uh, as like a yoga pose where our head is down or if we wanted to go gardening that afternoon and we were working with our head down. So let's try to avoid where our head is in a dependent position and we're flushing with blood. Also, um, some people have been known to like red wine and that can, that can flush uh, you know, one's face. So your mileage will vary on that, but I often tell people just to refrain from alcohol for about 24 hours. So, yeah. There's another question. Good. Mm -hmm. um, it says, is it true that the longer you receive Botox, the longer it lasts in between treatments? Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you take it. I hate that question. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pass. Yeah, I know. Well, and no, not necessarily. However, like Dr. Mm. Cappuccino just said, that if you, even if you just do it once, you're, you know, you're going to get some results out of that. And I do have patients that just do it every six months or before a wedding or before an event. Well, you that's know? a question coming up too. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. Um, but, and that's perfectly fine. You know, if that's, if that's how you feel, you know, you, that makes you happy to do it that less frequently, mm -hmm. then, you know, yeah. The question was, like, is, do you find it doesn't last as long? I'm sorry, I was laughing at myself. You know, <laughs> no, it says, is it true that the, or, don't need it oh, the more, yeah, the more you do it, it lasts lasts longer. longer. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'll, yeah. I find that some people will, it, it's always dependent mm -hmm. on the person, mm -hmm. that um, they will use it, maybe I have some patients once every six months, and, and they'll come back at that six months, and I'm like, wow, you don't have much movement. Yeah. But other people, within three months, you see that movement. It, it just depends on your facial expressions and how strong your muscles are. Yeah, I think that's the answer. I think there's a lot of variability in the muscle mass, the strength of the muscle, how forcefully we make emotions and those facial expressions, um, I think that, again, I, I think about this a lot. Um, personally, as a patient who gets Botox, once that's taken effect, it actually sort of retrains my brain not to make those motions. So I'll say like, oh, I'm so angry, but I don't make this really hard frowny face. And even after it's worn out, I'm sort of trained not to make that frowny face. And then one day I look in the mirror and I say, oh, stop making that frowny face, and I know it's time. Yeah. So I think there could be a little bit of that happening, but I don't think there's, for most people, a physiologic effect where it just lasts longer. Um, but you may think it, the duration of the effect of the treatment lasts longer. So, All right, I hope that answers that one.
All right, uh, how many treatments will I need? All right, well, I, we kind of answered that yeah. one. Yeah. On average, three to four treatments a year for most patients. Yes. Yes. Right? You can get away with fewer. You could certainly do more. You can do fewer units more frequently. It's, it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Um, oh. it's, it's very tailored to each individual mm -hmm. and the way their face works. So you know, here's a question that the first timer might ask. Oh, so am I going to see the results tomorrow? When am I going to see them, Renee? No, you're going to see them. What? I have an event tomorrow. Oh, I'm so sorry. About time to come then. <laughs> um, five days to two weeks total. I like, uh, you might start seeing something at five days at two weeks. I say, please give me two weeks. Two weeks. And then give me a call if you need a little tweak, if you think one of your eyebrows is doing something a little strange right. or this wrinkle's not quite gone, come on back in. Yeah, exactly. Big mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Five days to start seeing it. Two weeks before we start, you know, worrying about changing, adjusting things. Um, since we're on that topic, I think it's a great question. So um, obviously, this is an art as much as it is a science, and we do. I tend to get a both a mental and a charted map of people's faces and where I put Botox, and um, you know, our our stat speaks for itself and the results speak for itself. But there's an art, and, and there's there's a talent and learning curve, and um, so, you know, those subtleties are important, but sometimes, I mean, personally, I like to do things just a little bit less on the first time for a patient just to see how they like it and not over paralyze somebody. Um, and sometimes there'll be an area of motion that you'll know, come back and say, well, I just have this one eyebrow that's up a little, that's common. Um, and it's so easy to correct when the answer is adding a little more. So I'd rather somebody come back at two weeks and just want a little bit more Botox than feel like they're a little too frozen. So. Mm -hmm. That's sort of that thought. Does it hurt? Does Botox hurt? Um, it can pinch. It's a tiny little needle. It can pinch. We also have a very cool little tool. Oh yeah, let's, let's look at that one. one. All right. It's a patients. vibration tool and it sort of distracts your mind as you're, we're injecting. Yeah. I also do some pinching sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know if you do that, but I pinch in the glucose area. Yeah, yeah, that really, yeah. That really yeah, does yeah, help. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I use the vibration tool. Um, Some people say, hey, get that little tool out. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. We have that cooling tool too. Yes, yeah. What happened to that? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Was it an electric one? Or? No, we kept it in the fridge. The ball? The glass ball? Yeah. Oh, yeah those, oh, okay. Yeah, Sorry. you like those? Yeah, those are nice. Um, I, you know, anything to kind of distract the skin a little mm -hmm. bit, I think works. Um, Talking works when you're talking, talking to the patient. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that helps. Yeah, I mean, it does help. I don't. I don't find it to be painful. I mean, I will say that there's tiny needles. Like there are Botox needles, and then there's one gauge smaller, which is what you use. They're tiny needles. Um, but every now and again, you'll Am I a good candidate for Botox? I mean, I just saw this one online. It's not a question I get, but most people know what Botox does and they know they're a good candidate. Let's talk about what a good candidate is for Botox. I mean, Anybody 18 years and older that have fine lines that or a little more severe line, um, yeah, is a good candidate. Yeah, so I, I would say that with every year that passes, there are more uses for Botox and areas for Botox. I mean, I just read um, an entire journal article on how it were, I was telling Angel today, they're starting to use it for hair loss, actually. And yeah, yeah, and the factors that you're trying to figure out okay. that. How factors. that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that. It'll probably be another Facebook Live event. Um, if I come back with a bald spot, you know, it didn't work. So um, I did I did look up before I got here um, how many Botox treatments are done in a year. Oh, in, in 2020, there were 4.4 million treatments done. Wow. So it is a very popular treatment. Wow. Yes. That's outstanding. Um, it's a lot of treatments. Yeah, so, um, but, you know, I'll just sort of start from the, the top down. Tell me if I miss anything. And um, these may not be the most common because they're areas that... I will routinely do. So from, from the top down, I will do Botox for migraines. So um, there are you know, temporal migraines and frontal migraines and occipital migraines, and I've treated all those successfully. Although um, 
we don't accept insurance and there are some neurology practices that might accept insurance. So if you're thinking about getting your Botox covered for migraines, then you know, I would recommend you seeing a neurologist or your primary care doctor. But that doesn't mean that we can't do it for you and you can certainly submit that bill. Uh, but just something to think about. Of course, the ones everybody thinks about are gonna be around the upper part of the face. The rule of thumb that I would tell the uninitiated is that if we're differentiating between Botox and fillers, and, and we can do that in a minute, Think yeah, about upper half of the face, yeah, upper half of the face is first line is going to be Botox and you know middle and lower first line is going to be filler, but that's a really uh, just an overgeneralization. So working down to so these transverse lines, these forehead lines, and I'm trying to make them to show you, but I have Botox in right now, so I, I can't really show <laughs> Am you. Am I doing that? Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. You know the ones I'm talking about right here. Um, so yeah, so those are a very common area. Um, of course, the angry lines are probably the most well-known areas in here. Smile lines, eyebrow height adjustment, these little lines in here, sometimes people call them bunny lines, transverse lines across the nose. Um, people will have a gummy smile. They see too much of their gums, we can adjust that to relax the upper lip a little bit. People who have overly active and wide jaw muscles and they feel it's you know, somewhat masculine or a look they don't want, we can soften that up a little bit. We can turn up the corners of the mouth just to give a little more of a wider and, and brighter smile, more natural, relaxed smile. We can do something called a lip flip, where we actually will just turn the upper edge of the lip up ever so slightly to show a little more of the pink without actually filling the lip. We've used it for transverse lines in the neck. That gets a little bit more dicey. It's a case-by-case -case basis. Um, it works well for- Chin? Oh yeah, chin, chin, right? Yeah, I don't do that one a lot, but- um, I've been doing it more lately. Yeah, me too, but I don't do it a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the dimpling in the chin. Yeah, we'll smooth that out a little bit. Um, sweating, so it works really well for sweating, whether it's the armpits or the hands. Um, the two bands? Yep, I was just mentioning those are the bands that people will see. I'm not doing vertical that, or the ones. Oh. <laughs> Again, that's why I said the neck is sort of case-to-case -case basis. Uh, what was the question you had? Um, so they said, what's better for forehead lines, Botox or filler, or could you potentially do both at the same time? Oh, great, uh, go ahead and fire So away. we can always do Botox and filler on the same day, the same treatment. Um, but uh, like Dr. Cappuccino said, for these lines up here, you really want to target those with the Botox. Um, you know, you can use filler in, in the temporal area um, and some things that can kind of help pull it all together, but I don't fill in the forehead. I mean, I don't fill in the forehead. Uh, I, I feel it's too dangerous. I, I'm going to leave that to the doctor. Yeah, yes. do those that. those fantastic answers. Yes. Um, I'm very comfortable that you gave those answers. Yeah, uh, I will fill in the forehead. Um, it is more dangerous. There are risks I'll go over with the patient. Um, that being said, I feel very comfortable with what I'm doing and I had to reverse those effects, but it's not first line and it's very much a specialized um, sort of treatment. So. Oh. And then, um, can you ice before and after to help with discomfort? Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. And then someone just commented and said that the pain is so minimal compared to the benefits of Botox. She loves her results and it's all what it's about. Oh, nice. well, thank you. Yeah, Who said it was Amory Rose. Ah, thank you, Amory Rose. Thank you very much. <laughs> that makes you. us feel very good. Um, there's, for a, now. there's another question I, I thought of is uh, that I always get is the first time person, you go up, I, I like to mark the face I so I know exactly where I'm going. Uh, especially if people's eyebrows are, we're all asymmetrical mm -hmm. to begin with. Well, not me though. You're not. Sorry, right, but most people. <laughs> uh, if one of the eyebrows is a little higher than the other, we're trying to work with that, so right. I mark that, and um, they'll, so I give them the budget. This is what it's going to cost, and yeah. then they'll say, well, can I only do whatever the price is? Oh, and so, but they want to do the Christ feet, the, the uh, forehead, and between the eyebrows, and I'm like, that's like getting a half a haircut. <laughs> so I would rather yeah. put it all in one area and let you get the results of that, and then we can go from there. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. We've got like lots of specials that we have throughout the year, so we can look forward to those bargains. Yeah, that's that's right? a, that's a really great point. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, most people get pretty uh, educated and they know what what they need and what they want and. Uh, but sometimes the, the newer patient will not understand that, at least my aesthetic opinion, I think most providers, um, you don't want to isolate one area and only treat one area over time. Like maybe in a given treatment, we'll just do one area because it's all you need. But 
um, for me, I, I just want everyone to look natural and beautiful and as good and youthful as they can. And so I try to avoid potential pitfalls and I'm looking downstream five, ten years. And so I'll, I'll often say to people, like, you know, I think it's wonderful that we're taking care of these lines, but let's not forget that hardly anybody has a very, very smooth central forehead and lines everywhere else. That's kind of a weird giveaway. So it's very good to keep things in balance, even if we're doing less of a treatment in other areas just to prevent uh, those lines from forming. But that's what you got us for. Um, I have a question here, it says, um, am I too young for Botox? This is a great question. So I think, yeah, the, the rule of thumb would have been 30 years ago. But of course, you know, of course, according to the FDA insert, it's you know, 18 years and older. There's a term that came out a few years ago called prejuvenation, which is different than rejuvenation. I like it, prevention versus cure. Um, so I'm seeing more and more people in their 20s you know, use fewer units. Uh, that probably does last longer for them because mm -hmm. we're not fighting that whole battle. The, the most important thing I can tell you about when to start Botox, this is the advice I'd give anybody, this is my public service announcement, it is much easier to prevent lines than to treat deep lines. So if you are asking me when is the absolute last moment that I can wait before I cross over that threshold, it would be this. If you see lines when you're expressing, but they go away completely when you relax and make no expression, you're probably all right. But the day you look in the mirror and you see a line when there is just completely no motion, you, you better better call. <laughs> better, better call. You better call. Better call. I, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I think the CDC probably would agree with me on this. No, I'm kidding. Um, that, that's probably a good time if you're waiting for the last moment. So. There is another question. Yeah. Um, can you use Botox while breastfeeding? Oh. Go, go ahead. No. Good. Not in our office. Not no. if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I think that's just a really good way to be. And I, I wouldn't personally do that or professionally do that. And mm -hmm. it's easier just to wait, you know, the one year. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. So, yeah, I think we should just... Better safe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, um, again... Does exercise affect the longevity of Botox? Okay, so, okay. Uh, Renee yes. already said yes. I already said that mm -hmm. about, uh, especially marathon runners, people that run all the time. Definitely. I'm gonna, go ahead. I, I, I see it, I, I, I'm not with every patient who's right. really into athletics and running and all that stuff, but you know, I, when I think about the larger number of patients that I have that it doesn't last that three months, they are pretty hardcore CrossFit. Yeah. Gym people. Yeah. So, if you read if you read the literature online, it will say that's not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that it, exercise does not affect that. But that has been my experience as well. Um, it, the way I, I always try to justify it in my head, I think there's just a hyper metabolism of people who work out constantly. And um, yeah, I do think it's a little bit shorter in the marathon runners, the CrossFitters. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've seen that as well. Um, all right. So. Let's, let's talk just for a minute about what are the differences between fillers and Botox. And um, I know this is just a common misconception, and I understand that. This is our field, so it seems just self-evident and second nature to us that we know the difference. Um, but a lot of people don't know the difference, and they'll use Botox generically to mean any injection of the face. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just laughing because I just find it funny. I'm not making fun of anybody. I just <laughs> think it's funny when people, you know, they're like, yeah, it's Botox and they mean filler and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, so just in general, Botox is the brand name most well recognized and original um, neuromodulator. So something that's going to change the impulse of the nerve to the muscle and then affect a change by relaxing muscles. There are other well-known and highly regarded neuromodulators like Dysport and Juvo and ZMN and Monoblock and there's a new one coming out. So there are a number of them. They all do roughly the same end goal, although we can debate in a later time the draws, drawbacks and benefits of each individual one. But fair to say that uh, Botox is the, the de facto gold standard to which all of the neuromodulators are, are compared to. Uh, a filler is exactly what it sounds like. It adds volume to the soft tissue. So it's, it can get rid of wrinkles, it can help, but it's going to do that by volumizing in three dimensions uh, our soft tissues. Whether it is deep and we're trying to augment the mid face and lift the lower face up, or if we're going right into a finer line, uh, or we're enhancing lip volume, I mean fillers 
um, you know, it's another wonderful discussion for another day, but I, I do think it's important that people understand the difference between Botox and fillers, neuromodulators, and soft tissue augmentation um, injections. So that's anything to add to that, mm -mm. really? No. Yeah, not a whole lot to say there, right? Um, all right, so the next question is what, what happens on the day of Botox treatment? I think it would be kind of fun if um, maybe I just pretended to be a patient and, okay. and you kind of walk me through and we can move the camera over and people can yeah. see. Right, you guys can, you get that to me. All right, so uh, you can you move it over and I don't know if it's going to so be a patient. You can just bring that as close as you want to or you can dismount it wherever you want. So after we have our discussion, I don't know if that was right or not. We would yeah. talk about what his uh, what his goals are, sure. what his concerns about. We would get him near around, he'd take a look, and then I would wipe the face with alcohol, make mm -hmm. sure it's clean, right. and then I would um, mark. Right. All right. So let's a say green marker. I would mark, mark, mark. And you, and you, and you can go. Okay. So, so let's say I want I want to get rid of these, these four headlines. All so, right. So yeah. typically, I, I would mark little little marks across the forehead. I might mark in here. Where I'm going to inject. Right, those would be good for my frown lines, right? right? Mm -hmm. Okay, right, perfect. Okay, and then. And what then about my, my crow's feet, though? I don't like those. Oh, yes, and then we would mark the crow's feet. Right. I would have him smile. He's going to do these movements. How's it looking? Do I need some books? You know, bunny, bunny lines. Bunny like bunny lines. lines. You don't have bunny lines, though. Good, good, perfect. And, and then we would draw up the Botox. It's a tiny little yeah, needle. Yeah, you can show them with how little that needle is. Tiny works. little needle. Right. Well, I probably can't can even see, see that. Can you, even you can see it. Oh, yeah. Good, perfect. Yeah. And it's very tiny. And then I would just go along and inject. And if, if he needed, I would use the little vibration tool. Mm, perfect. As I was going. Yeah, I like that. He's very nice. He uses this all the time. <laughs> a lot of my Botox people I are so you don't no. use it either. Not very much. No. Some yeah. patients I do, but they're so used to it. Yeah. It's just like boom, boom, boom. I, I just like gadgets. It's, now, it's kind of um, if it's a new patient, I spend at least a half an hour talking yeah. and injecting. If it's somebody that likes to come in on their lunch hour, yeah, well, I'm calling it the lunch hour. Exactly. We can be through in eight to ten minutes, and they're off doing their thing. All right, I'll, let, me, let me pretend to be a patient here. All right, so. Um, I gotta go back to work. Is anybody gonna notice? Can they see that I had it done? You might have a little tiny, almost like a little bee sting area for the next 20 minutes and it'll go away. 20 minutes. You can't put your makeup on and I don't okay. want you touching it. Okay, I'm gonna make up. Nice and, and don't clean. put a hat on. Okay. I don't like a hat right there. Okay. I just injected your forehead. Okay. And you certainly right. can't go to the spa and have a, um, uh, a facial She's not either. Either. Oh, when, how, when can I put makeup on? Uh, tomorrow, like 24 hours. Is that the same? I tell them they can put it on right away. Just yeah. don't rub. Yeah, I, I, I say, say don't yes. rub. If it's a, if it's, it's a, if it's a, lightly, just if it's a filler, it. I tell them the, the next day. Mm -hmm. um, with Botox. I now I don't know what you say, but if somebody comes in and tells me they're in a wedding on Saturday oh, yeah, and it's Wednesday, let's yes, talk about that. I, I typically tell them no. Yeah, I would. Because say. I don't know how their body's going to yeah. react and if they're going to get a weird eyebrow yeah, going on, totally. and I don't want them to have a reaction. Yeah, totally. Excellent. Am I cleaned up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be a really you funny, really funny joke, right? You, you don't want green you know? And the other thing while you're cleaning off that I just want to add is um, our charting here, the way we chart is is really thorough. So if you've always seen Renee and you suddenly have to see myself or vice versa, whatever it is, we don't write in the chart. We make great notes about exactly where, how many units where. We'll make a note if somebody has a habit of dropping to go higher or whatever it is. So, um, you know, even though you may see one or the three of us in a rotation, or, or, Rachel, or right. Rachel even, right. yeah, right. Um, you know, she makes great notes too. So we can all kind of look and if you come in and you say, oh, I saw Rachel last time, but she wasn't available. So, you know, we can see exactly what everybody did. Yeah, that's that's a great point. That yeah, totally yeah, easy to switch. Yes. Uh, Jenny, any other questions in there that we have? That no, we not right now. All right, let's see if we have any more to talk about. Cost. Yeah, let's talk about Oh my gosh, we got we we've got to talk about cost. We have to talk about cost. Before we get to cost, I just want to finish these. Let's see. Yes. Uh, common myths. We covered these. Does it have immediate effects? No. Is it made from pure boat? botulinum toxin? No. Exercise? No. There you go. Question number 19. How much does Botox cost? Um, all right. Well, it's, it's irrelevant what it says here. Let's just talk about our own experiences. So how do you, how do you explain I would, it? I would say that we fall, when people think it's too expensive, I think we fall within the average yeah. in our area. 
per unit. It gets charged per unit. That doesn't make a lot of sense to most sure. people. Um, but um, so it's $13 a unit. Yeah, so for some people, they'll know what that means. Like, how much is it per unit? Right. And so the, the simple answer is it's $13 per unit, and then semi-annually, or at least we know our open house in the fall, there's always going to be a significant discount, and people can buy in bulk and store it up for the year, store those credits up. Right. Um, but, you know, let's say I was just kind of off the street and I never, you know, knew what that meant. And I said, well, you know, what, what does it cost to do just, just my forehead here, you know? And so I get, I get that a lot. Um, and so I'll, I'll usually just think, well, you know, maybe 15 units, so maybe uh, roughly $200 per area. Is that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, kind of? Yes. Yeah, come out. Yeah. And it's probably a pretty good rule of thumb, right? Maybe $200 per, per area. Yes. Right. And I think weighing out the results and the way you can feel better about yourself, it's worth it. You know, when you're not doing it every month, it's every three or four months, I think it's totally something new. You know, somebody needs to budget. Yeah, just budget a little bit, just mm -hmm. pay attention each month, stick a little bit aside, because we know a lot of people pay with just cash. Yeah, yeah, no, I've, I've noticed that. You know, I don't want my wife to know everything that I do. She can't know all my beauty secrets. Speaking of men so, and women. Yes, yeah, that's a great, yeah. We didn't talk about that, because Let's talk about people men. think just oh women my gosh, get no. them no, it's no. great for men. Brotox. Brotox. <laughs> exactly. Brotox. Yeah, that's, that's right. So we have quite a few male mm -hmm. patients. We do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, they look great and refresh. People think, oh, you can tell. Some do with Botox. Yeah. No, not if it's done properly. And, yeah. and I think they look just rested and a better version of themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, thanks for bringing that up. But, you know, after these Facebook Live, I sometimes I'm thinking, oh, I wish I had mentioned this thing. So, yeah. Um, I really like speaking to the uninitiated because you know this is most interesting if you've never heard it before. One of the reservations I always hear in public, and I love when people don't know what I do, I'm sure you mm -hmm. like that too, and be like, oh, Botox, I don't want to look like a freak. Right. You know, I'm going to look all frozen. Okay, so I love that. And let me just throw out this little caveat of wisdom, and I use this, and please share it with other patients. So I don't hear it that much with Botox. I hear it mostly with lip filler. Mm -hmm. So people are like, oh, I don't want to look like, name whatever celebrity looks stupid this week, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, all right, all right. And then the, the, the answer that I always say is that, you know, any cosmetic procedure, but we're talking about Botox today, but we'll just talk about injectables. Whether it's Botox or filler, any of these can be done to the point where people look abnormal, strange, weird, noticeably done. And so for somebody who's thinking about one of these treatments, they might see someone that just looks wrong and they know they've had bad work done or too much work done. And, and what I always want to caution those people is to remember that for every one of those people you see that looks weird, there are probably a thousand that look totally great and you don't right. know they've had it. Right. Anybody, look, I can pick it out, you can pick it out. We've all seen the person whose lips are just too damn big, you know, where they're just weird eyebrows. Um, yeah, we don't want you to look like that. Like, and if you want to look like that, I personally won't. I, I won't take either. care of those people. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've made a couple of exceptions over the years, but I've made them swear to never tell anyone that I did it, <laughs> and I will never show you their pictures. Um, so you can't prove that I did it. But yeah, I mean, we can all tell weird work. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It just that happens to be some celebrities like that. I think it's honestly for notoriety. They clearly have access to good aesthetics, um, but um, we promise you, we're not going to make you look weird. And that's something people say to me too. Oh, I, I don't want Botox. I don't want my lips to look like that. And I was yeah. like, that's what I was laughing yeah, at. That's, yeah. exactly. that's the one that I was laughing at, yeah, by the right. way. Right. Um, yeah. What I was laughing and at. It's like, nope, Botox is not what's making those lips look yeah. like that. So, yeah. 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 Um, I love it. It's a, it's a great. We also use Dysport here. Yeah. And people ask for Dysport sure. name. And Absolutely. It's the Coke Pepsi of Botox, is what I say. That's what I say too. And um, don't say it in front of our reps. No. They, no. They, no. They, they don't like that. No, we love our reps. <laughs> we we, do. And we respect the fact that they're so proud of their products and they should be their all right. fantastic products. Um, you know, one thing I've seen, and I'm sure you guys have seen as well, is a patient will come in and they'll say, you know, I've had Botox for five years and this last treatment just, it just didn't work. You know, mm -hmm. Renee, it only lasted two weeks and you know it lasts three months. So how do you handle that scenario? What do you personally do with that one? <sighs> I, I offer to switch them to the other product to try. I mean, I've read different studies about how maybe your body starts to get immune mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. and try a different product mm -hmm. and sometimes it works and then sometimes they want to flip back to the mm -hmm. next one. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe we just didn't put enough in, or maybe they're getting older and we need 
more Botox, so mm. I'm just for mm -hmm. okay. it. That's, that's what I say. I tell them first and foremost that each treatment is individual in and of itself. Even if it's the same injector and you're the same patient, mm -hmm. each treatment is individual in and of itself. So then I say basically we have, I think, three options. And I don't have mm -hmm. the answer. But the option yeah, is, yeah. was it just that individual treatment? Mm -hmm. And this one's going to be great again. Is it that you need more, mm -hmm. same thing? Mm -hmm. Or is it that you're metabolizing through it and now we need to switch to something else? And then the patient goes, okay, so which one is it? I don't know. Yes. I don't know, right? Yeah. So what do we want to do? Do we want to stick with Botox again, doing the same treatment, or do we want to go ahead and up, or do we want to go ahead and switch to Dysport? Yeah. And that's a conversation that you know we come to a conclu a decision with. I come to them with the patient. So. Yeah, I think it's the same. Um, you know, I've certainly seen patients where um, they come in and they're like, it didn't work, and it's been too too. Let's assume that it's been enough time that it should have worked, right? Because that's the first thing we have to make sure. Um, you know, and when they say that, you know, the first thing I look for is, well, maybe we just missed an area or we needed more in a certain area. And that's more often the case that we just needed more. Because I, I told you before, I tend to be conservative. Um, but I have seen a couple of times where it didn't work at all. Like, not at all. Rare, but that has happened. Um, typically, just, you know, how I handle that, if it's somebody that's had it for years and years and years, I say, let's, let's try a different filler. Let's try... Disport if you've done Botox and Botox and Disport um, and see if that's the case. Um, but sometimes they'll be like, no, 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 I really want to try Botox and uh, we'll try it again and, you know, it, it worked. And I think it's happened just a couple times. Um, in that case, I'll, you know, I'll write it off to, you know, I'm not sure, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, who knows what happened in that, in that case. I just treated a friend first time and she, I, I wanted to see her after two weeks just to check in and She's like, yeah, I don't know, notice anything different. I mean, she had deep lines. Mm -hmm. And so I said to her, squint your eyebrows together. She's like, am I doing it? Yeah. <laughs> Raise your eyebrows. She goes, I guess I'm not very self-aware. Self and I said, it's working. Mm -hmm. It looks beautiful. She has no wrinkles. And She's closing like, your eyes like look. this is not making the angry face. <laughs> <laughs> like, it didn't work at all. Okay, make your angry face. <laughs> no, 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 it's working. Yeah, it works. It's a great treatment. It is a great treatment. I, I would say, you know, probably the, the most significant cosmetic treatment breakthrough of the last, I don't know, 40 years, 50 years, right? If there was one, it would probably be Botox. Botox, yeah. I can't think of anything else that's been more I profound. did also look up how long have they been investigating Botox. Oh, uh, let, me, let me answer this. Yeah, do you know? Well, I know they started using it in the 80s, right. but I believe they kind of discovered in the late 70s. A neurologist who came up yeah, with it. Yeah, but year, centuries, they said. For oh, centuries, really? they've been looking at how this works. For Interesting. Things. So they just they knew they had tainted honey. Yeah, they knew they something. Like, let's just give, let's what just give we do? Igor a little no, bit right. and see what happens to him. But no, 80, 89, you're right. Yeah, 89 is 88. And that FDA right. approved in 2002 or something. Right, yeah. right, so, right. Because, yeah. Because I had to look back, remember again. Yeah. yeah. So it's really cool. It is really But I would cool. think if you're going to do anything at a plastic surgeon for your first time, it would be something you want to try first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. after three months, if you don't like it, it's right. gone. Yep. That's another question. Ooh. What do you, how do you answer, am I going to look really old but if I stop? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's a good question. question. No, yeah. it's, you're not going to look 20 years older as soon as it wears off, you know? Now, I do tell my patients, though, you may look at yourself right. when it wears off and feel like you look 20 years older again, right. but that's just because the lines are coming you back and it's time for another treatment. Right. Jenny, so any, any questions that we missed from the audience? How many no. people were watching us today, Jenny? But we have 19 right now. Yeah, I think yeah. it was up to like 20 something. Well, that's good. Yeah, and we hope more people are going to watch this later on um, when people get home from work and tomorrow, thanks to yes, the magic of the internet and yes. Facebook, will be a resource for all time. All right. Well, I want to thank, thank you, I want to thank Renee Plazek, Angel Zirkel, um, Dr. Jack Cappuccino, and we have Jenny Doan working mm. the the uh, teleprompter. She, <laughs> yeah. she does everything. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank and we'll see you thanks. next month. Bye-bye.